Welcome, my name is Amy. I am the furniture flipping artist over here at Flip It Furniture. Today we're gonna be making over this console table. I bought it at the thrift store for 70% off at their Black Friday sale. It's got great storage, good bones, it's in good condition. There's some bumps and bruises on the top, but we're gonna fix those right up. The plan for this piece is for it to be really gorgeous. I want it to be gorgeous. Well, I want every piece to be gorgeous, right? What am I saying? But I want this one to be gorgeous and bright and vibrant. Um, the color we're gonna use, it's, it's just gonna, wow. That's the plan. Now, let's flip it. I start by cleaning my piece with a TSB cleaner. You wanna be sure you're getting rid of all the dust, dirt, and grime off of your piece so that your paint properly adheres to it. I even pull out the drawers and clean inside the cubbies. I'm done cleaning with my TSP. I go back with a wet rag with some water on it and just wipe it down to make sure there's no residue left. Then I'm taking my sanding sponge and I'm sanding some of these edges. And there's a little, there's a few cracks and scratches on the top. So I sand those nice and smooth and then I use my all purpose putty from Bondo. And I'm just gonna fill them in. Because this isn't real wood, I can't sand it down to get rid of those scratches. So using the Bondo is a great alternative. You can also use wood filler. You'll only need a thin layer because the scratches weren't really deep. So then when it dries, I can go back with a, just a sanding pad and sand it down smooth. Because this isn't a real wood piece and the surface is really shiny and smooth and slick, I'm going to use Country Chic's Clear Bonding Primer. This bonding primer is amazing. You only need one coat. It goes on so smooth, no streaks, you know, no brush strokes, nothing like that is left on it. It's a thinner consistency. So I just apply one coat to the entire piece and I wait about 12 hours to apply my paint. This just guarantees that my paint is gonna stay on for a really long time, years to come. I don't have to worry about it peeling because the surface was so slick underneath and I don't have to sand the piece either. The paint color I chose today is called Pine Trees and it's by Carts and Millie. This is an Australian based company. It's a family owned business. The owner made her own paint because she wanted something that was really low in VOCs and asthma and allergy friendly. It is a mineral paint with a chalky like finish and it has it's a sealer already built in so you don't have to add a sealer if you don't want to. When it's dry, the finish is almost like a velvet. It's very smooth. And you can tell that it has the built-in sealer because it, it dries really, really hard. So I just, I really love this paint and they are looking for distributors and retailers in the US. So I'm fingers crossed. If anyone is interested, you can reach out to Tarnia. She is the owner. I will leave all of her information in the description box below. I do think that this paint is going to be available in the US pretty soon and I will be using it a lot more so I just wanted to really show you guys how it works and how it looks. And if you want to see more Carts and Millie, you can check out Creep Designs by Twitch. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description box because she is a brand ambassador for Carts and Millie so you can see the paint in action on her channel. And if you were interested in purchasing it right now, it is available to be shipped from Australia to the US. And here we are on the second coat. The first coat is completely dry. It dried in such a beautiful dark green color. And I just wanna, I want you guys to see how smooth it goes on. Keep in mind, I am not using water. Um, I'm getting a really nice smooth finish. I have a high quality brush and I am not spraying my water mister. I'm just using the paint. It's just a really nice consistency. I want to show you that I do paint the edges of the drawers. You know, usually I have to go back and forth and smooth them out, but I can actually apply it like this because this paint is almost like self-leveling. 
it you know it looks like you have little flecks there but then when you come back to it after it's dry it's all smoothed out really nice I decided that I wanted to add these would you bends you can drill a hole all the way through and then I'll show you exactly how I apply them but I'm applying my paint to the full would you bends and the hardware this was the hardware that came with the piece and I just thought it would go really perfect with that style of would you bend. I'm using Carts and Millie color in Black Bear. This is a black and I'm gonna mix it with their top coat just to make a little glaze. I wanna add some glaze to the details on my would you bends. Just add a little bit of paint and then I put some sealer in it. And this way, I don't have to seal that would you bend either afterwards. When you're using a glaze, it's pretty much also a sealer, so you don't have to seal over your glaze. I cover the entire would you bend and then I take my rag and I just wipe it back. I wipe back from all the raised details and then the glaze, the black is gonna stay in those creases. You could also do this with a wax, but I just preferred a glaze on this because it dries hard, it seals itself, you know, and it looks really great. Since I'm using one solid color on this piece of furniture, I figure that I can really glam up the hardware. And here you can see what an impact the glaze makes. It really makes the details pop. Getting a little bit of um, a darker color in the details always makes it pop. Now while I'm waiting for those to dry, I am going to seal my piece. I'm gonna seal the entire piece. You don't have to, but I love a satin finish. Um, the I would say the finish with just the paint with the sealer built in is something between satin and matte, but I just, I don't know what it is. I love satin. I even paint my walls at home in satin instead of like an eggshell. I just love it. I think it's really pretty and easy to clean. So um, I always go for the satin. Now the consistency for this sealer is really thin. So I don't know why, but I kept adding and it's just too much. You don't need that much. So I really had to smooth it out. A little goes a long way. Um, I just... I think out of habit maybe, I kept dipping when it just didn't necessarily need it. I did end up pouring the concealer in another container because I just thought if the green got on my brush and then I re-dipped it back into the container, I didn't want to contaminate it because I do want to use it for other projects in the future. Now I'm applying my gilding wax to the would you bends. If you're gonna apply paint and all that to the would you bends, you can apply your would you bend first. But for me, I knew that I was gonna use some glaze and I didn't want it to get on the drawer fronts. So that's why I did um, that part first. Now with the gilding wax, you could apply the gilding wax after it's already on your piece, but I, I always say this, I'm so impatient when it comes to the gilding wax because it's, for me, that's the most exciting part. <laughs> that's the biggest part of the transformation. The gilding wax is like so pretty that I get really impatient and I wanna see it right now. So if you're like me, doing your would you bend before you're putting it on the piece, make sure everything is really, really dry and then apply your would you bend or else it will all come off. Now to apply the would you bend, I'm just using my hair dryer. You need something with heat, a heat gun, a crafting heat gun. And then I realized I forgot to drill the other side. So I just had to make a really quick hole so I can apply my hardware. But it, everything is really um, bendable on this because I heated it up with my hair dryer, as you can see. And then I apply my Type Bond Original Wood Glue. Any Type Bond Wood Glue will work really well. And then I just use my brush to spread it out and then I apply.
I take the heat to it one more time just to make sure it's on really well and that heat kind of dries the glue that's coming out which makes it a little bit easier for me to clean up and I clean that up with just a brush with a little bit of water on it. At this point, I thought I was done, but I decided that something was missing and the trim around the top, I thought, you know what? I have this left over from my last project. If I use this and add the green with the glaze and the gold, it will just tie the entire piece together. So that's what I did. So after all that I thought I was done, I just, I wasn't done. So I'm using the same exact process and on this, I'm actually going to, right now it's super bendable, I'm gonna use my razor blade and I'm going to cut the edges just so it's easier for me to apply rather than using the whole entire strand. This way, it's, it is much, much easier. Again, this could have all been done right at the beginning before I had painted my piece and I would have just went ahead and painted it the same way, but I didn't know that I was gonna add the trim. I really didn't think it needed it, but looking at the entire piece, it just needed a little bit more gold <laughs> and design and pizzazz. We really want this to be a wow piece, a showstopper. So the Woody Benz, it they change your entire piece. Now when it's really dry, when the glue is dry, I take a sanding sponge and I'm just sanding the edges, each corner, because there's a little gap and then I'll fill that gap in with wood filler. And if there's any gaps between the top of the trim and the top of the table or whatever you're you know, using your trim on, you can just add a tiny bit of wood filler in there and it covers the gap and it looks like part of the trim. Now I'm adding two coats of pine trees to match the rest of the piece and I wait for it to dry in between coats. And the next step is to add the glaze and I'm just gonna use a little crafting brush so that I don't get it all over the piece. I just want it on the trim. And as you can see here, it looks a little dusty, but that's because I was sanding. So I just have to give the piece a wipe down with a wet rag when I'm done just to get all of that dust off of it. I'm waiting for the glaze to dry. So since I added the trim, I just decided to add another top coat to the top of the piece. It doesn't need it, but any extra protection, especially on a high traffic area, I think is a good idea because, you know, whoever's gonna buy this is probably going to put um, some decor and things like that on top of it. My top and my glaze are dry, so now it's time for the gilding wax, and that is the final finishing touch. And here's a reminder of what it looked like before. And here it is today. I love the final result. I think the mix of the gold with that green is just beautiful. And there's just a tiny bit of depth with the black bear glaze. I really love the way the top came out. It's super smooth. The finish is really nice. There are no brush strokes. It just looks very smooth and sleek. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you hit the like and subscribe button, and I will see you next week with another furniture makeover.